The question is about humility in the face of the grandeur of the universe and also the, er the sort of intrinsic arrogance of human beings. I think that it's a wonderful thing if we appreciate and take the time to pause in the vastness of the universe long enough to feel humble. It's very hard to think about these ideas and not feel humbled. And if you, if you don't like feeling humble, then you can be a science and denier and a climate change denier and watch the Amazon burn. I mean, that's not very, <laughs> very good. So I think that we have natural uh, arrogance and natural humility. I and mean, the scientists who, who did this struggled with their egos. And they talked about that. How they struggled with their own egos because to go from a single guy working in his lab with a 1.3 meter instrument and you're gonna win the Nobel Prize to, to stopping everything for three years just to decide if it's viable, then to becoming a member of an 800 person team, you know, that requires both ego and humility. <laughs> and in a particular balance so that you keep going but you don't ruin the project. And, um, and I think we just have to accept our human traits and do the best that we can. What I first wanted to write about was exactly that. What's it like to climb Mount Everest and to not know if you're going to succeed? And, and there were people who failed along the way and who are documented in the book. And, you know, bodies were left by the side of the road. I mean, it really was a very arduous, very dramatic um, climb and uh, not everyone made it. And I, I, I was asked um, by Kip also and the other scientists, what are you gonna do if there's a detection? Are you gonna rewrite the whole book? And I just thought, oh no, because this is the whole tension of the book. I couldn't, I couldn't write the whole tension of the climb and the perseverance and the intensity and the curiosity and the insane drive, what makes somebody do such a thing um, if I knew they had already succeeded? And so when they told me, the reason they told me was because they wanted to give me a chance <laughs> to, to change the book if I wanted to. And um, all I wanted to do was to add an epilogue basically about the success because it really wasn't about the success. And a lot of science books are strictly about successes. They're about coming down from the mountain with the accomplishment and telling the world about what you've seen from that beautiful view. And that's wonderful, but it erases all of this other stuff, which is um, about the kind of human drive to do such a thing in the first place.